This week saw an important event in many game developers' lives. That's right, it's Ludum Dare time. For the uninitiated, what is Ludum Dare? For me and many other game developers, it's a chance to drop what we're doing and to challenge ourselves to make a game in 48 or 72 hours. I chose to make one in 48 hours and compete in part of the event called the Compo. The Compo has a few other restrictions as well though. You must work alone, your game, all your content, i.e. art, music and sound, must be created in 48 hours, and the source code must be included. But aside from the rules and time restriction, we all stick to making the game with the same theme. For Ludum Dare, we spend the days leading up to the event voting on the theme. The one with the most votes is announced at the start of the jam, and people start jamming away. The Ludum Dare theme this time was summoning. I spent the day before this looking at the top voted themes, and thinking about a game idea for each and every one of them. It's good to prepare for the event, honestly. This is especially important I learned when I once spent half of the 48 hours just thinking of the game idea. That is precious development time, and I think Ludum Dare uniquely allows you to prepare. It even allows using any tools or libraries to create your game. If you want to start learning game development, then I highly recommend that you give game jams a try. They are a great and fun way to learn. Not just that, since the jam requires the sharing of source code for the compo games at least, it's a great chance to see how a lot of games operate under the hood, including mine, with the source code available on my GitHub account. Although be warned, given the time constraint, this is never well optimized or production ready code, so do take it with a grain of salt. It's a good place to start learning, but shouldn't be where you end. I will be sharing a Godot template with some of the most important features that I need in all of my games. For now, the things I'm adding are a scene and audio manager, for example. If you want to get a hand on it, then you should join my Discord, since it'll be the first place that I share the template when it's ready. I hope this helps you kickstart your career making games, and I still remember fondly getting into game jams back in 2018. In fact, my first game was also part of Ludum Dare, and was also an RTS. You can check them both on my itch.io page, and tell me what you think. Did I get any better after all of these years? And if the RTS in Godot beats the one made in Unity. It's funny how I made both, having very limited experience in each engine. In fact, this is a super recurring theme, as guess what my first solo project in Unreal Engine 5 was? That's right, also an RTS. If it's not clear yet, I love this genre. It's my absolute favorite. There really aren't enough of them getting made. I wanted to start my solo game dev journey with making one, but back in October I felt like the scope was way too big for my first game. And thus I shifted over to Vuno, my roguelite city management game where you play as the head of a tech guild. Actually the RTS I made for the game jam starts with the exact same name. And that is because you also play as the head of the tech guild. The idea was that you pilot a drone, for lack of a better term, and are looking down on the battlefield, using your magic to teleport units straight into the fight. It differs from base building RTS games like Command and Conquer where you build a base, harvest resources, and build units, and then send them off to destroy your enemies. Whilst this format is the one I played the most as a kid, and loved the most, I took a different game as inspiration for this game jam. World in Conflict blew me away when I first started playing it. It was a huge departure from my beloved Command & Conquer 3, but it was amazing in its own way. It blew 13 year old me's mind. That's because the units felt heavy, calling in support powers was amazing, and leaving out the resource management and base building meant you focused fully on the combat. It was different, but I loved it. So that was the idea. Make an RTS with no base building or resources. You just call in units by teleporting them instead of airdropping them like in World in Conflict, and you focus on the combat. I think my favorite part about the game is the theme. This fantasy setting for the RTS creates a lot of interesting options. Of course, game jams come at a cost, and even though the game is fully functional and you can play it right now, it is far removed from my original vision. I hope that acts as a looking glass to show the potential of the idea though. I wanted to add so much more, from magical spells that acted like support powers from World in Conflict, to add interesting unit variety, showcasing why a fantasy setting can be so cool, with everything from knights who fight in melee, to swarms, to angels, to demons, undead, the list just keeps going on and on. I'd love to hear what you think about it in the comments below, both at the current state of the game and the potential for an RTS set in a world like this. Making the game was a huge challenge. In total, I worked on the game for 25 hours, but seven and a half of those were after the deadline. Currently, on my itch.io page, you will find two versions, the LD55 compo version and a patch. I spent that time after the deadline trying to improve the game by removing a few of the bugs and adding a few features. And that's because I really enjoyed working on it, and I really want to see it closer to my original vision. At the start of the jam, I drew up a whole mission with dialogue, voice acting, more unit variety, spells, and even a boss battle. 
The boss was also pretty special because it was a reference to the D&D campaign that inspired the whole world of Vuno to begin with. I won't spoil because I do still want to add it and see my friend's reaction when they play it, but those things aside, which honestly were optimistic for a 48 hour game, I am proud of the fact that the basics work. From spawning units to unit selection, movement, combat, and my favorite feature, the objective system. I like how modular it is. I have a manager responsible for parenting objects. It starts the level by activating the first objective. Then whenever an objective ends, it calls the next one until all objectives are met and thus you win the game. Objectives themselves are nodes that only have a start, update, and end function. This is the parent of other objective types, like the one I added to the game that defines an area you need to capture and ends when the player is the only one with units in the objective for some time. The way it's hooked up means that I can add any type of objective to the manager. I will admit, even though I had a very positive opinion of Godot before the jam, it almost ruined the game for me. You see, I'd actually exported an EXE for Vuno before, so I knew that exporting works fine, but this was on my other laptop. So as I was scrambling to have anything functional for the deadline, with an hour to spare, not to mention an extra hour called the submission hour after the deadline, disaster struck. I followed the same steps as last time, but Godot just refused to export. I tried so many things. I tried to find answers online, only to find people with the same issue and no replies on Reddit or on the forums. I kept trying. I even went back and tried to export Vuno again, and even that didn't work. I kept trying, mind you, this was after eight hours of just focused work. Not to mention it was 4 a.m. and I really wanted to sleep. So at the end, after two hours of trying to fix it, I just gave up and went to bed. The next day when I woke up, I slowly and calmly started fixing all of the errors that popped up in the output. I knew that these weren't the reason it was refusing to export, but at this point I was just trying to fix anything I thought could be the cause of the problem. And as I expected, it really didn't matter. But this time I had a strange idea. I decided to create a new Godot project and just copied and moved all of my work there. I then tried to export and it worked. My guess is that something was corrupted in the export settings file because I copied the export settings from this new project back to the old one and it worked fine. Does this mean that Godot is no longer best engine? Not even close. I have suffered way more issues with both Unity and Unreal, not to mention how slow they run. Running and iterating in Godot is snappy and just feels amazing. Opening Visual Studio in Unity alone was just pure pain. So yeah, even with the export scare, I'm still sticking with my newly found friend here. I love working with it. UI in particular was pretty good. Compared to Unity in particular, it's amazing. And I will admit that some things are missing for me. For example, Unreal's pathfinding is way better. I missed the state machine there. And overall, just working with AI felt way better in Unreal. For example, here in Godot, as I was working on the navigation system, the frame rate just dropped significantly when I tried moving more than 10 units around. So I do think that if I continue working on this project and decide to expand the RTS game, then I really have to create my own navigation system. Overall, this was an exciting week. Ludumdare was a breath of fresh air, and I hope that you all get to enjoy playing my submission, which you can find in the description and the pinned comment below. I haven't forgotten about Vuno though. In fact, my goal for this week was to make a magic system, and guess what? I did. It's just in a different game. <laughs> so I'll be yanking it and moving it over to Vuno soon. I can also use the objective system, with a few tweaks to account for periods of time where there are no active objectives. So overall for both projects this week has been fairly efficient. I'd love to hear your thoughts, either in the comment sections below or on my Discord channel. Next week I have a lot in store. I will work on the Godot template, I promise, and I'll also start working on my secondary gameplay loop for Vuno, mostly the city simulation. I want the policies, spells, and technologies to actually have an impact on the city's growth and the economy. And finally, I want to release another patch for Vuno the Adventurer's Log. So subscribe to watch more about my games and how I make them. Like this video and leave a comment below to summon the good graces of the YouTube algorithm, and thank you all so much for watching.